Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about differentiation of inverse trigonometric functions. So we already talked about the derivatives of trigonometric functions, but what about for inverse trig functions? So just as a quick recap, if I have sine of x is equal to y, that means x is equal to sine inverse of y, or equivalently, x is equal to arc sine of y. And there are similar formulas or stations if there's similar equations for cos tan etc etc but how do we take the derivative of this stuff so for example if i have the derivative of sine we know that's cos but what's the derivative of arc sine you might be tempted to say oh but the derivative of arc sine is arc cos that's not true so if we want to differentiate this how do we go ahead and how do we do that well let's go ahead and derive the formulas so this will be a fairly short video but I think it's kind of important to demonstrate where these formulas come from. I strongly recommend you remember the method of how I differentiate these rather than memorize the formulas, because it's a lot easier to remember the method. But if you want to remember formulas, you can, but it's not always that straightforward to remember them. Well, with that being said though, let's just start with the proofs. So suppose I want to, suppose I have sine of y is equal to x. Okay, well, if I draw a triangle, that means that sine of y is equal to x over 1 because, well, that's just x over 1. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, this is equal to 1 minus x squared. Okay, but now let's use implicit differentiation. So if I differentiate the left side and right side, well, derivative of sine is cosine of y. But then by implicit differentiation, we have to differentiate y, which is just y prime. And that's equal to the derivative of x is just 1. So that means y prime is equal to 1 over the cosine of y. But the problem is that the y, ha remember that from implicit differentiation, y is just really a function of x. So what we're really saying is what is the derivative of the function with respect to x? So this is a cosine of y. We need that to be in terms of x. Well, that's fine. You can just use this triangle. So by, def by definition, we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's our adjacent, and the hypotenuse is 1, so it doesn't really matter. So in this case, we get that our, our derivative is equal to 1 minus x squared. So that means the derivative of arc sine of x because, well, if I inverse the sine, I get x equals, so once, just to be very clear as to what I'm doing here, uh, if I take the inverse of sine, we get y equals the arc sine of x, like so. So that means the derivative of arc sine of x, well, according to my, what I just did there, well, that's equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and we're done. So that's the first set of the major derivatives you're working with. So let's go ahead and box that answer. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with cosine, tan, and the remaining trig functions. So let's go ahead and do that here. So suppose I have the cosine of y is equal to x. So as usual, that means that y is equal to arc cos of x and then we just have to differentiate. Of course we're just going to use implicit differentiation. So the derivative of cosine of x, well that's going to be minus sine of x uh, sine of x times, uh, sorry, sine of y, y prime, and the derivative of x is just 1. Well that's going to give me the y prime is equal to minus 1 over sine of y well, okay, now if you go ahead and make a triangle, once again, that's y, the adjacent is x, the hypotenuse is 1, and that this means we get 1 minus x squared. Okay, but then sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. So if you go to do that, we get that y prime is equal to minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Or in other words, the derivative of the arc cos of x or cosine n of inverse so we'll just be consistent with my notation 
So the derivative of arc cos x is equal to minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So not too bad yet. Okay, so that's the second of the formulas. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is arc cotangent. So suppose we start with tan of x, tan of y equals x. So we're going to use the exact same method as before. So this should be fairly rudimentary at this point. So that's y, and that's going to be the x, and, the, uh, and tan is opposite of adjacent, so that's a 1. That means this right here is going to be 1 plus x squared. Okay, so if we continue with this point, well, if we differentiate both sides, we get the derivative of tan is secant squared of y times y prime is equal to 1. And then on the bottom, we're going to get 1 over secant squared of y. Uh, y. But secant squared is just 1 over cosine, so we just get cosine squared of y. Well, here's the thing. We get that y prime, well, cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so we get 1 over the square root of 1 plus cos, oh, oh sorry, one, the square root of 1 plus x squared, but that's squared, so we just get 1 plus x squared. And once again, just to recap what I just did there, cosine is squared, so, sorry, my screen just jumped. So cosine is being squared here, so as a result, the cosine of y is adjacent over hypotenuse but we didn't have to square that so one squared is one and then the hypotenuse is also squared so we just get one plus x squared so that means that the derivative of the arc tan of x is equal to one over one plus x squared so that's the next set of our formulas Okay, now next ones we're going to do is the reciprocal trig functions. So we're going to be working with arc secant, arc cosecant, and arc cotangent. So let's go ahead and start with cotangent. So the next one is the cotangent of y is equal to x. Well, okay, that means that if we differentiate both sides, well, the derivative of cotangent, if you look back at my inverse trigonometric functions video, the, deri the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Of y, and by implicit differentiation, the deriv derivative of y is y prime. That's a 1. And then, once again, if you make a triangle, that's a y. And then that's adjacent, uh, sorry, uh, cotangent is 1 over tan. So this means that that's equal to 1, that's an x. And then this is still going to be 1 plus x squared. And then right here, well, if you divide, we're going to get y prime is equal to minus 1 over cosecant squared of y. Okay, but cosecant squared of y is just well, it's it's just one over sine one cosecant is just one over sine. So if you go ahead and you know write this all out, well, cosecant well we can fix that. So we can write it as minus sine squared of y. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So with this situation, we get y prime is equal to minus one over well, this, uh, this hypotenuse squared, so that's going to be equal to 1 plus x squared square root squared, so that's going to go away. And then we're going to get minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so that means that the derivative of the arc cotangent of x is equal to minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. So once again, I'm not doing anything too crazy here. All I'm doing is using the triangles to derive these formulas. Okay, so the next one we're going to be doing is the uh, arc secant. So I'm going to let secant of y is equal to x. Okay, but that would mean that if I take the derivative of both sides, well, that means we get the derivative of secant of y is secant of y, tan of y, and then by implicit, we get y prime. That's the derivative of x is just 1. So this means we get y prime is equal to 1 over the secant of y times the tan of y. Okay, but now if you make a triangle, once again, so this is y, and then secant is 1 over cosine. 
So this is going to be a hypotenuse, and that's going to be my adjacent. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, we get x squared minus 1. Okay, so if you go ahead and write this all out, we get y prime is equal to secant. Well, secant of the y is just x. That was directly given up there. And then tan of y, well, that's equal to opposite or adjacent. So it's going to be the square root of, well, let me just fix that x squared minus 1, uh, there's, and there's going to be 1 up there, and that right there is our derivative. So that means that the derivative of the arc secant of x is equal to 1 over x square root of x squared minus 1. And then we box this answer, just to emphasize its importance. Okay, so that's that derivative. And the last one we're going to be doing is the derivative, so we just move down, the derivative of the cosecant or the arc cosecant. So in this case, we have cosecant of y is equal to x. So that means if we differentiate both sides, we get minus cosecant of y times the cotangent of y times y prime is equal to, well, the derivative of x is just 1. Okay, so if you go ahead and bring this all down, we get minus 1 over cosecant of y, and then this is going to be cotangent of y. Okay, so once again, if you make a triangle, so this is going to be y, that's going to be cosecant, remember, is 1 over sine, so it's hypotenuse over opposite, and then by Pythagorean theorem, we get x squared minus 1. Okay, so at this point we get so we get minus one over the cosecant of x, but that's just equal to x, and then cotangent is one over tan, so we get the square root of x squared minus one. So that's y prime. So this means that the derivative of the arc secant or arc cosecant. Okay. So the derivative of this is equal to minus 1 over x square root of x squared minus 1. And that is our final inverse trig derivative that we need to memorize. So all of these ones that I boxed right here are ones that we need to memorize. So starting with the first one, derivative of arc sine, derivative of arc cos, derivative of arc tan, derivative of arc cotangent, derivative of arc secant, and the derivative arc cosecant. These are all the terms you need to memorize if you want, but I'd rather, I would most rather just derive it really quickly because the derivation of these formulas are very quick. So if you know, if you understand the intuition behind how to derive them, the formulas come pretty quickly. But otherwise, you can just choose to memorize the formulas if you want, but otherwise, we're done. So in terms of examples, I'll be doing examples in the next video. So this was just more of a video on how to derive these formulas. So I hope this video helped. If it helped, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll answer them as best as I can. Have a great day.